What up, Hello Ego here with another little tip for you. A, this time it's gonna be a pretty cool effect using only Ableton's um, native stock built-in effects to create a phase dispersion effect. Pretty similar to the one you get using Kilohertz Disperser, which is, I know is a very popular, uh, a very popular effect. I'm just gonna show you what this does, kind of give you the idea for the sound of it, and then we'll go ahead and build one uh, using EQ3. Um, so first of all, what I got here is a drum loop. This is actually a drum loop I made. It's available on my Patreon, uh, or it will be soon. I believe this might be one coming up in a future uh, Patreon sample pack. But if you are interested, I'd love to see you over there. Give away sample packs every month that I make using my hardware modular synths and things like that. Tutorial videos, more long form, very in-depth videos on some of the subjects like, you know, similar to what I talked about here. Uh, I'll give you track review give you, uh, this is, you know, not just one track, right? A bunch of feedback sessions. Whenever you have a track, you can send it my way and I will give you some solid, solid feedback on it. Custom sample pack, a sample pack made just for you. Uh, whatever specifications maybe you have, you can tell me, otherwise you can just leave it up to me. And then also uh, private lessons as well. So back at it over here. Here is the drum loop dry. Let's go ahead and just take a listen to it without any dispersion effect. And now with the disperser. Turn the amount up so you hear it a little more. Here it gets that kind of like almost lasery, rubbery type sound. Uh, that's a result of the phase being shifted and it creates this sort of like you know, a dispersed phase sound. It's got like a weird, almost rubbery, lasery sound to it. I really love it. I feel like it gives sounds a lot of movement and feeling. I use dispersers all the time. Um, but what if you don't have kilohertz? Or what if you just want a little different flavor of phase dispersion? Or if you want dispersion with a little bit more ability to tweak exactly how it sounds? Well, that's where EQ3 comes in. Now, why are we gonna use EQ3? You can really use anything in, in live that has a built-in EQ, all right? So what happens when you EQ a sound is essentially that EQ is gonna shift the phase. So if you have an EQ8, and you create like a cut right here. The way that they do this is they shift the phase around this region to put this area out of phase with itself. So like duplicate the signal on top of it and put some of it out of phase and then that will cancel out or it'll shift phase so that it boosts, all right? That's a general, very, very bare bones uh, description of how this works, but the effect that it has is that this will actually shift phase around the entire frequency range. So adding an EQ, even if, like, just I'm just gonna show you, for example, here. Turn this EQ off, and I'm gonna have an EQ down here at 10 hertz. Is there any sound down at 10 hertz? Really, I mean, it's some low junk down here, but like it's not actually affecting it too much. But watch what happens if I were to duplicate this out a lot. Wild, right? So technically, no matter what, any kind of EQ is gonna have an effect on the sound. Um, just because of this phase dispersion effect. So we can use things like EQ3, which splits the frequencies up into different bands using EQ crossovers, right? We have a crossover between the low and the mid, a crossover between the high and the mid, and that creates three bands with two crossovers, and that's going to shift phase a little bit for us. Um, if I were to just take this EQ3 and duplicate it out like I did that EQ8, we start to get that phase dispersed sound coming in. It's a ton of EQs, right? I mean, it looks ridiculous, but it gets an amazing sound. However, things start to get a little weird when you have like 20 EQ3s because you gotta go and adjust each of these independently. So what I've done on uh, my end is I've created an effect called the uh, EQ3 disperser right here. And this is just a bunch of EQ3s. And I'm gonna show you how to build this too, so don't worry. But me to adjust the amount. Do you see when I turn the amount down, I'm like, you know, sequentially turning off these EQ3s like so, and allows me to shift where the crossovers are. So the frequency high and the frequency low, and that gives a different sound. You 
some pretty crazy sounds going on in there. Let's just go ahead and build one of these here. Start with an EQ3. And the very first thing you want to do is group it up. And I'm going to map to macro 1, the crossover for frequency low. I'm going to map macro 2, crossover for frequency high. And I'm also going to map the power button, a little on-off switch for the EQ3. And let's go ahead and map this, uh, map the uh, uh, octave, decimal per octave. There we go. Shh. So I'm going to switch it between 24 and 48. This is just the strength of the filter, right? So it's like 48 uh, decibels per octave or 24 decibels per octave. A higher strength EQ, one that's cutting more sound out, a steeper cut, that's going to uh, have a stronger effect on the phase dispersion. So it's kind of nice to have the switch, you know, going between these two like that. All right. So next thing I want to do is start duplicating these out. And it's important that you do this mapping before you duplicate all these out so you don't have to go through and do them all independently. That's really annoying. When you map the first one, the rest copy over all the other micro mappings. Here we go. Just going to go over a whole bunch of them, something like that. And let me close all these down, make it easier to see. I'll leave one open. Oh. There we go. Hear how, how much stronger it is when you go to 48? Wild sound, very cool. But how do you get this device on to work? Because right now it's just turning them all on or off. So here's where you gotta open up mapping and set up things a little bit here. You can try and figure out how to divide up 128 different, um, you know, 128 different integers into an approximate slope. Um, I'm just gonna go really fast and do the first few of these and then pause it so you don't have to sit through and watch me. But I'll set this first one to like 120. And this one will be 110, 100, 90, let's just go 95. My frame gonna run out here. 95, uh, 90, 85, 80. And let's pause here so you don't have to watch me do the rest. All right, we're back. Uh, the last few got a little weird. I kind of didn't judge it quite right, but it's close enough, right? We have a general slope going down. Uh, so now when I hit this device on button, you can see that they turn off iteratively like that. So this is kind of like an amount. Amount, there we go. Freak low, freak high, and then slope. We can just say uh, 24. DB, 48 dB, something like that. Now that looks terrible, but you know. There you go, that's your very own uh, disperser effect. Hope that that was useful. Hope that you use this, it's pretty cool. Um, you can take this to extremes too. I mean, I have, I, I think one of these days I'm gonna build a 128 version of this where there are actually 128 of these EQ3s all together. Um, that should be pretty wild. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to pause this and build this out and see how it sounds. And ta-da, I have done it. I have, oh, what did I do here? What's going on with this? One tw why does it look weird? 120. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a weird glitch that just happened there. Anyway, 127 at the top zero at the bottom. Let's go ahead and see what this monstrosity sounds like. Weird. Pretty crazy. I'm definitely saving this. All right, hope you found this fun and useful and helpful. Go forth and make dispersers.